California, it's already the leader when it comes to charging in the United States. Already has more charges than anywhere else in the United States, but it's completely changing what it's doing. It's massively increasing the number of publicly available charges, which actually makes a lot of sense considering the number of electric cars on the roads in California. When I was there recently, well, it wasn't that recent, actually it's what, eight months ago now. I can't believe the time's gone so fast. But when I was there, I got a chance to drive some Teslas and I got to supercharge. The superchargers were everywhere. There wasn't a great network of non-Tesla chargers, but that has changed and it's definitely going to change even more as a result of what's happening now. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. California, they're doing a few things. One of them is they are spending $57 million on EV charges for apartment blocks. A lot of people say, I can't have an EV because I live in an apartment. And I think to myself, so why is it that like 100 million Chinese people who live in apartment blocks have EVs and they're fine with it? And you can't. 100 million. I mean, I'd understand if it was only a few thousand and you were like, well, those weird three, few thousand, they're crazy. Uh, I can't believe they're doing it. But if it's 100, more than 100 million people, who have EVs and live in apartment blocks, it can be done. But I think what needs to happen is governments need to support it. So California, they are going to provide cash for level two EV charges. And how it works is this, $57 million for multifamily housing and nearby spots where tenants can plug in. California property owners or stakeholders ready to install level two charges at multifamily and adjacent tenant accessible sites can get the funding. And what's covered is this, up to $8,500 per level two charging port. That's quite a lot of money. Starting in October, the program will also kick in $2,000 per publicly accessible level one port. Uh, there's also additional subsidies for other things like tribal community members. Equity First, an equity-based scoring system, bumps projects that serve disadvantaged, low-income areas in order to for them to get it done first. The project is being run by CalStart with Grid Alternatives and Tetra Tech. Um, CalStart is, apparently, they've already overseen more than $1 billion in national clean transportation incentives. So anyway, that's what's going on with apartment blocks. But there's some other stuff happening as well. Now, in addition to this, there is the Fast Charge California project. This will award $55 million for the installation of EV charging projects. And the award covers 100% of the installation cost with the incentive capped at $50,000 per port. This is for DC fast chargers that deliver between 150 to 275 kilowatts. So California is not just going for, you know, lower power apartment owners with, you know, slower charging chargers level one, level two, they're also going after DC fast chargers. So this is a big incentive. Incentives at 50,000 per charging port, that's US dollars, for 150 to 275 kilowatt fast chargers. Stores that deliver an even higher output, exceeding 275 kilowatt, can qualify for up to $100,000 per charging port. I mean, surely you could install them almost basically for free at that price, up to 100,000 US dollars. So access to chargers is about to get a whole lot better. It's true that the United States is well behind China when it comes to the number of EV chargers and the speed of EV chargers is much quicker in China as well. However, California, they have nearly 59,000 public charging stations, more than the combined total of the next three states combined. New York ranks second with 17,873 ports, Florida has 12,553, Texas has 11,463. And so you can see, if you put all of them together, they're nowhere near California's 59,000. In fact, they're only at about 41,000. California's still ahead by another like 18,000. Massive, massive number. The US government has withdrawn its support, unfortunately, for clean energy programs. And this is definitely gonna affect other states. The Department of Energy even expressed its ambitions to supercharge fossil fuel mining with a social media post with a picture of coal captioned, she is the moment, in spite of the fact that the biggest coal companies in the United States 
went bankrupt long before the Biden administration ever set foot in the Oval Office. Insane. Some states are taking matters into their own hands, though, doubling down on their efforts to continue combating greenhouse gas emissions and well, helping people have access to what the rest of the world has access to. California's new EV charging program is going to prioritize the deployment of EV charging stations in low-income and disadvantaged communities. And apparently, the program does support Tesla-style North American charging standard plugs, but requires stations to have at least 50% of their ports compatible with CCS. Applications for California's EV charging funding will be apparently closed by the 29th of October. But I think what's going to happen is they're forcing these stations to have 50% of their ports compatible with CCS. Probably those charging stations will become obsolete eventually because I think most car manufacturers in the United States are adopting NAX chargers. Either they have already or they plan to do so for the next gen cars. So I'm not sure that having these charging stations BC, become new ones BCCS is a good decision. I think it'd be better to make them all NACs, but have plugs on site, um, basically a plug that's attached to the cable that enables you to um, turn that, C- that NACs into a CCS for people who have only CCS. That's what I'd probably do because in the future, eventually, you know, most people have NACs chargers, NACS standard. Anyhow, that's a side issue. The good news is California is clearly prioritizing EV charges. It's done this for a long time now, for many years, but this is going to give a big boost to DC and DC fast charges and also slow charges for apartment blocks. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. I filmed this video and then I I realized something, guys. The charger being used couldn't support the winner. In my opinion, the car that won this test didn't really achieve its full potential because the charger was only capable of 350 kilowatt charging, but the Zika 7X can charge at up to 480 kilowatt. Twice a year in Norway, they do the biggest electric car test in the world. They drive the cars from sea level all the way up to a thousand meters elevation, and they test 27 different models, compare them against each other. But one of the things that they do, aside from just driving them until they die. So they drive them until there's nothing left. They have to get tow trucks to pick the things up. They also test the charging speed. They test them all from 10 to 80%. That's the the standard way of measuring them all. Unfortunately, some manufacturers now, they only offer you weird numbers like 30 to 80% or we think it'll charge this fast or whatever. Anyway, this is a real world test and it shows you that some cars that claim they can charge really fast actually can't 